What's up everybody? What's up church? What's up Christian soldiers? What's up Christians? What's up my fellow brethren? My name is Joshua Mike aka J Mikey and today's topic is about lyrics and what's so special about today's topic? Today's topic is about using a secular tune or a worldly music now removing the lyrics and replacing it with godly or Christian lyrics for example the time we say Jesus, Jesus, Jesus how I love you you are the king of kings you are the love of God all I want to say is that Jesus is the king of kings it's J J, J Mikey. Okay, so about a few weeks ago, a social media platform posted a video of a few children in churches, like a talent competition, and then they were singing a song. And in that song, it was obvious that the tune of that song was a secular tune it was done by a secular artists and then they replaced the lyrics with godly lyrics all right and it was even in the open caption and this generated a lot of controversy why because that song at that particular moment was really trending like it was all over the place and so immediately they sang it you could see a lot of youths in the church going yeah! because they understood where the tune came from they understood where it all came from all right so today's topic is about answering that very also controversial question is this a good thing to do is this right to do is this safe to do that is what this is about i'm not going to be playing the video here for several reasons of course i did a thread about all this but i eventually had to delete where the video was because of several reasons okay but the rest of the tweet is still there and we're going to be using that to talk about this topic today so i have my tweet here the first tweet that had the video that i had to delete was simply talking about christian lyrics in secular tunes or in worldly tunes Hmm. And then I first of all mentioned that a lot of people go into this innocent minded People that do this aren't doing this because they are evil or whatsoever There are several reasons why a lot of people do this and a lot of them are genuine reasons But we're gonna break this down and expand this as to if this is right or if this is safe to do Okay, a lot of people might say there's no big deal in this They might say the children were young I mean, they were teenagers and youths, most likely. I'm sure they were not like children, like five years old. They were like teenagers and youths. So some people might say the lyrics glorified God or it's creative. Oh, it's a creative process, you know? There's nothing bad in it, all right? So that's what we want to trash out today. So in my first tweet, I said, first, let me make it clear that it's not a sin to take a secular song and replace with Christian lyrics. Also, this is not a secular versus Christian conversation all right i believe i've trashed this in my previous videos if you haven't watched that video you can check in the description below for the topic should christians listen to secular music in that video i was able to broadly explain the meaning of secular the meaning of christian song and then the meaning of worldly secular and then i said a lot of points there that will make you understand everything i'm probably going to talk about today so if you haven't seen that video please check it out it's going to be up here in the card or you can check the link in the description below we've already discussed that topic so if you haven't gone through it feel free to do so over there then i said we're rather talking more specifically about using known worldly songs as ministrations and presentations for example switching up the lyrics of a popular song made for the clubs you get what i'm saying a particular song probably was trending probably came out a few weeks ago it's all over the place and then this particular song has worldly lyrics for women worldly lyrics lyrics that do not glorify god but some of the lyrics now and then you take the tune of that song and then you try to replace it with christian lyrics. that's what we are talking about so this is about christian versus secular right so we need to make that clear also i need to add that this video is not to condemn christians that do this i'm not doing this video to criticize to condemn or to judge anyone all right because i even know people who do this for honestly genuine reasons for example if there is a particular song that's everywhere i know someone who does this for a very genuine reason when a song begins to trend especially it's in the color tuned it's in malls it's in supermarkets it's on the street it's everywhere so the tune is probably ringing in your head so this person has a way of changing the lyrics up so that even when the tune is still in the person's head he can immediately combat it with another tune that that's the reason for doing that so there are many reasons why some people do this but i just want us to look at the broader picture the bigger picture as to all these things especially when dealing with presenting these things on stage or ministering using this means okay so the purpose of this thread is to bring to limelight the full scope of it so that the wisdom can be applied i also use the analogy in matthew chapter 9 verse 16 to 17 as i believe it gives a good perspective for the topic so what does that passage say so that passage says no one puts a piece of unstrung cloth on an old garment for the patch pulls away from the garment and the tear is made worse nor do they put a new wine into an old wine skin or else the wine skin break and the wine is spilled and the wine skin is ruined but they put new wine into new skins and both 
are preserved. So what is this saying? You don't put a new wine into an old wine skin. Old wine for the old wine skin. New wine for the new wine skin. That's like the bag where they keep the wine, okay? It's like a sack that holds the wine that they drink, okay? So now in this context, let's call the instrumental and tune of a song the wine skin and the wordings and lyrics the wine. So we can say based on this context that the worldly songs are the old wine skin. Since these are the songs that are old self, is meant to like these are songs that our previous self before we came to the knowledge of christ is meant to like okay so worldly songs old wine skin now putting the message of christ which is the new wine into an instrumental or a tune that was originally composed for worldly pleasures the old skin can affect the message since the new wine is meant for new skins this is one of the ways to keep the things of God sacred. It is wise. So what am I trying to say? Some people might say, but it's just a tune. There is nothing like secular tunes. There's nothing like secular tunes. And mind you, I'll say this again. I'm talking about especially cases when you want to minister a song or you want to present a song to a congregation or to people. You might say there's nothing like secular tunes, not like worldly tunes, everything is secular, it's not religious, it's neutral. But think about it. If a tune is already known for a song, for example, if I sing a tune called na 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 you already know the tune I'm singing, regardless of if the tune itself is neutral. And I'm just using an example, For Elise is a very neutral song, it's a classic tune. But if I look for a song like probably, if I can think of a popular tune right now, uh -huh. for example, if I use the tune, ta 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 ta, and I'm saying, I'm feeling so hungry, I want to eat some rice. Yes, the tune is neutral but i'm talking about food but you have heard that tune used several times for the nigerian anthem okay so you are still gonna be thinking of the national anthem whereas i'm singing about food what am i trying to say a tune and a song is usually fused especially when that song is generally heard and is already very popular it is very difficult to separate the two now we've already said worldly songs are of the old man and we are using that to represent the old wine skin. So the tune, the instrumental, that is the skin. That is what is holding the message. The message itself is the wine. So now you are taking the old wine. We don't want old wine, we want new wine. But then you are putting the new wine on the old wine skin. And according to the passage, it says, and the wine skin is ruined. And that version says, it bursts. You will ruin the wine, you ruin the wine skin. So leave the old wine for the old wine skin and put the new wine in a new wine skin all right so and i said number two through the holy spirit in us we are able to receive amazing and groundbreaking tunes to house god's messages and christian lyrics our position is to inspire the world and to be copied by it not the other way around it sends a message that we are the ones copying them if we look to them for tunes and then we take that knowing fully well that we can get amazing tunes if we sit and receive these things in fact sometimes we say oh what we're just getting is the creative ideas and stuff like that yes i understand that very perfectly but if they can get tunes we can get even better tunes that are meant to change them and bless them that are meant to bring them into the knowledge of christ they are meant to look at our side and say this amazing tunes that people are creating what is that in fact that's when they're supposed to take and try to even copy but when we begin to copy it just screams not being able to sit down and receive from the god of all creativity so number three i said there are millions of godly songs with beautiful tunes out there that we can tap inspiration from this is safe for believers copying and pasting tunes from songs that were intended to promote what we stand against contradicts our stand and the power we claim to have it is just overall safer some people even say things like i don't listen to christian songs because christian songs is boring my brother you haven't heard Christian songs. You've probably heard only 2% of Christian songs. When you hear Christian songs, just like the last video I made, there are Christian songs for different things you want to do. If you want to feel good and shake your body and dance when an outing or you're driving or you're jogging, there are Christian songs for that. Don't limit Christian songs to only the ones that you probably know. There are several. You just need to go on these platforms. Go on Spotify. Go on Apple Music. Go on YouTube Music. There are a ton of them. You will get lost in them. Alright? So, there is no reason for us to actually go out there and get tunes. Because you might say, oh, I want tunes that can appeal to the youth. We have Christian tunes that can greatly appeal to the youth. And it's overall safer. Because many times you don't even know the inspiration behind these songs. You might not even be aware of what exactly they are promoting. They might be promoting the most corrupt things possible. That brings us to number four. Let me just even say that. So number four, taking the tune of a song is also a form of endorsement of the original song. You may not know this, but you are practically paying homage to the original lyrics, especially if it's a popular one. Now, a song is popularly known 
known for something. Like, just give the example of National Anthem. I'm not saying that it's bad. I'm just using an example because I don't want to use any existing worldly song right now. But if you are singing the tune of the National Anthem to sing something else, you are indirectly paying homage to the lyrics of the National Anthem, whether you like it or not. And then another thing I didn't add to this tweet is there are also some people in church or in these gatherings that are trying to intentionally break away from worldly songs. Now, when you pick those worldly songs and then you change the lyrics and use the same tune, what you are doing is calling their attention back to those songs. It doesn't help them. There's a passage that talks about if a meat causes my brother to sin, I'd rather not eat meat so that he will not sin. Meat is not the issue itself, but then if it causes someone else to stumble, then I'm probably not going to do it. So what are you doing to help those who are gradually trying to win back? Imagine someone gave his life to Christ today and he said, I'm done with the world. Goodbye world. I stay no longer with you. Goodbye pleasure of sin. And then he comes to the church and then the first tune he hears is a particular tune of one of his favorite songs when he was back in the world. I mean, what message are we trying to pass across and then i now said number five taking tunes from other songs in this manner over time makes us lazy and unable to wait on god to receive brand new inspiring tunes when we practice and develop ourselves in the act of receiving from god rather than copying we become better music ministers in the long run just like one of the interviews that Dunsi had with pastor adifarasin when he asked him that how did you come up with this song he said i stayed i waited Dunsi don't go anywhere I want to ask you one question for the benefit of worshippers and their hundreds of thousands watching on Facebook and YouTube. What is the secret to the fragrance of your worship? To somebody who's, who's coming up and isn't looking for crowds but wants to touch the heart of God and say, God, fulfill your purpose in my life. What's your secret? Okay, you know, I could say, yes, the mercy of God. But this is my secret. I spend time. I spend enough time. I stay there. I stay there. I stay there until I hear him. The Lord said to me many years ago, do not come to me for song. Desire a relationship and I'll give you a well. I waited. I stayed. Staying in God's presence is something that you practice. Same thing with T.Y. Bello when she said she created an entire album based on her devotion every morning. So. When you practice the art of waiting in God to receive tunes, it helps greatly than looking around to say what is trending, what are people finding fascinating right now. Let me pick the tune, all right? So over time, if we practice the art of copying and pasting, it makes us lazy. Let us rather cultivate the habit of staying in God's presence. Now, you're not staying in God's presence because you want to receive tune. You are staying in God's presence so that He can fill you and because you love God. And along the line, that passage says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and righteousness, and all other things shall be added. So Definitely all other things shall be added when we seek God's kingdom. So the aim of that point was seek his kingdom and his righteousness and don't look elsewhere. And then I added number six, our intentions matter. When we take a popular worldly tune and try to stuff Christian lyrics into it, what are we thinking? Now the aim matters a lot. Now if the aim is to be part of the world or a trend to feel among, we have to watch it. 1 John 2.15 says, Do not love the world or the things of the world, but if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that it is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not the Father, but of the world. Lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. These are the things that worldly songs promote. So think about it. You want to go into this approach of picking a worldly song. What exactly is your intention for doing that? Are you doing it because, oh, everybody knows that song is trending, so let me use that. That is a worldly song that is trending. You are not meant to promote a worldly song that is trending. And if you feel you you love the song you love the things about the song be very careful that you are not already loving the world and the things therein okay so be very careful about that if the aim is to get the audience excited it means you're trying to appeal to what their flesh is interested in there's nothing wrong with getting the church stirred up during administration but let it be done under the inspiration of the holy spirit a lot of us make that mistake a lot you are taking a particular slang this is not just about leagues also slang slangs that are used in worldly songs you hear maybe a particular slang of a particular worldly song is always like pineapple pineapple and then oh everybody loves when a secular artist says pineapple pineapple and then you're now going to the church glory be to god hey pineapple pineapple What are you doing? What are you doing? Please stop. Please stop. What you are doing is just appealing to that worldly part that we are supposed to be killing daily. The worldly part of the flesh that we are meant to be killing daily is what you are fueling. Alright? And then you see the congregation say, yeah! 
it's not the spirit that is causing the hey, it's the flesh that is causing that one. I don't see how you want the spirit of God to move in an atmosphere that is being subtly saturated with worldly elements. Okay, you hear the pineapple, pineapple. I'm just using that as an example, it doesn't exist, but imagine that's the kind of a thing you'll be asking, why? Why? Let's be careful. This also applies to dance moves. It's gonna be another video. I'm gonna do another video regarding dance, but I'm not a dancer, so maybe that's why I'm not eager to do it. But story for another day dance and then i said a bonus point there are legal risks to tampering with intellectual property so it's not wise to get used to it copyright infringement is a real thing but of course there are many factors and conditions to this so there is a legal aspect if you get too carried away you take somebody else's tune and then you put your own lyrics into it and then you release it this is no more 2003 we're in 2022 people sue now i'm never talking about something in nigeria people sue now all right so be very careful don't get used to this i'm just going to stop it so i believe we've learned a thing or two about the concept of using christian lyrics in worldly secular songs so just like i said this is not to criticize anybody or to judge or to shatter tables or whatever you might call it this is just simply to show the full picture and scope of what we are doing so be very careful especially if people are watching especially if you are ministering okay I understand people who do it indoors for whatever reason especially if they want to just keep their mind sane from all the things they've heard all day they say they switch it up with bible verses i understand that but when you're doing it on stage you have to be very very careful all right i really like to know what you think in the comment section let me say a big thank you to everybody that has been dishing out comments liking and new subscribers very soon who knows who knows who knows maybe this channel will do giveaway who knows but thank you so much i really appreciate the comments the likes the subscription and everything i'm very grateful i also like more of your comments because i really learn from them i learn from this comment so I, I take my time to go through them from time to time so i like to say your thoughts your opinions what do you agree with the most what don't you agree with i like to know everything don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and I'll see you guys in the next video. God bless you.